guys, thank you so much for joining me once again for On the Couch with Fouch. Now I know, I mean, I, and he's already made a comment, I know a lot of you, have you been watching for a while, and you've seen several times we haven't had a couch. Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes sometimes. So this time, we have these very nice chairs that we're gonna sit in and do this interview. And I have, of course, Michael Booth. I'm not the only one that's not had a couch. No, you're not the only oh, one. Okay, I don't feel, feel better. Slide it. Yeah, yeah, I do. Hi. Yeah, he was he was making a comment about it earlier. You know, whatever. Everybody but, else gets a couch. <laughs> but we got chairs, so we're actually sitting down. Um, have you ever watched on the couch? With I couch? have. You have. I have. Who have you seen? I, I knew you were going to say that. But I watched Jim Brady's. Okay. On because I I was hoping they'd talk about us, and that was cool. Um, um, was it Devin McLean? De Devin? I did one with Devin. Devin. Yes. Devin McGlamour. Um, I've watched others. I, I, Probably Ronnie. Ronnie. I, uh, yeah, because that was in the back of our That was, was in the bus. In our yeah. bus, yeah. right. Well, good. I'm glad you've watched. Have you, you probably haven't watched them all the way through because I know how you're all ADD. You probably didn't get it all. Most of it. I don't like it. Uh, okay, good. Well, then he doesn't know what's coming at the end, so this is going to oh, be good. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be perfect. So thanks for joining me. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank I've, you. I've been hanging on to... Christian. I've been hanging on to this interview with you till like the perfect time. Oh man! Am I... And I'm excited about finally <laughs> getting to do the interview with you. Now I'm nervous. Do you know why though? No. Because everyone has a question that they want to ask Michael. Booth. Oh, nice. Okay. So I have got some wonderful, wonderful questions, and it's going to be perfect. And the nice thing about it is that I don't know if you can see those or not. That's the questions. You guys have now seen the questions. He has not seen them yet. So this is going to be perfect. Mm. So let's get right into it, brother. Mm. Uh, Terry Hunt would like to know, what is your favorite Bible verse? They, they honestly change from time to time. Currently, okay. it would be James 4.10, which is humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. I think it encapsulates what the gospel is. Our job is to humble ourselves before Christ he redeems us and lifts us up. It's also applicable in everyday life. Right. So it's a powerful little verse there. And, it, and like you said, it changes maybe yeah. in like seasons of your life that exactly. you're in or exactly. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Sandra Hammer, her mm -hmm. question is, what age did you get saved? Okay. <laughs> you, you would think it would Here be a go. very simple, a simple answer. I profess Christ as a seven-year-old boy at uh, Brandon Heights Baptist Church down in Brandon, Florida. Um, you know, as many people, when you grow in your walk with Christ, you learn more. And I think I learned more of what Jesus did for me. And then as a teenager at 17, I think I really began to grasp, wow, this is what He's done for me. And uh, so, in a sense, I went forward and then I was baptized. Um, was I saved as a seven-year-old? Probably. <laughs> That's a big bug. Yeah. I hope I'm eternally saved. I'm, I know I am, but I'm just scared right now. You guys probably didn't see it. There's a big there old go. bug big old right bug. there. Yeah, I was scared. There it goes. Bye, bye. Okay. So, okay, so back. Seven years old, yeah. but I really got it, for lack okay. of a better word, when I was about 17. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. And I think a lot of people... Yeah. Go through that type of a thing. Childlike faith is what I had. Yeah. They said, hey, do you... Do you want to trust Jesus as your Savior? I said, sure. I yeah. mean, I believed it. He was the Son of God who came to pay for my sins. Right. Yeah. Right. Very cool. Good question. Um, Adam Knight has mm. a wonderful question. Distinguished name, Adam. Adam Knight. He would like to know, how has your Bible study affected your ministry and singing? Mm. Okay. I, lo I love that question. That's a great question. Years ago, um, a preacher we have sang with many times told me that my ministry would only be as effective as the overflow from my own personal walk relationship with Christ. Okay, so we get into this thing and I read my Bible from time to time and I'm, you know, but I'm, I got natural ability to speak on stage and to communicate with people. But I have a cousin, Daryl Tony, who rode with us one weekend and a loving, loving rebuke. Now he laughs, he said it wasn't a rebuke. I'm like, well, it may not, you may not have intended it, Right. But that's the way I took it. And, right. I, and loving and rebuke go together. Right. No problem with that. 
But he said, you're shooting from the hip. You need to learn some scripture and support what you're saying and have something to say. Hmm. What it did, it called me out that I really wasn't studying. It was kind of right. fluff. And so I got in the Word, began to really study. And it's amazing, when you get in the Word and study, it will come out. Right. And so it elevated, the, I believe, the effectiveness of the, of the ministry of the Booth Brothers. Right. When That's I really awesome. began to pursue the Word and now, dig in. Is that also when you started offering the uh, free stuff yeah. part of the concert? <laughs> I did that because it, maybe it was an abrupt change for people coming to see us. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, Michael's doing this long gospel presentation. Um, and we started getting a lot of letters. And it just it confused me. It startled me that people would say, they were angry, angry with mm. me. I'll use that word, it's a strong word, but I believe they were angry that I was spending time at a gospel concert presenting the gospel. Now I understand that they paid to hear the singing, but we were still doing 22 to 24, sometimes 26 songs right. in a program by ourselves. And I was presenting the gospel, so I took no music away. I just added that to it. So. To kind of help with that, I said, look, I, I know people paid to hear singing, but this part's free. And then it turned into kind of a funny thing. But I got to be honest, it has really diminished the letters. Really? I think it's, I think it's part I address the elephant in the room and part people have gotten used to it over right. time. Now, how long do you think that you've been doing that now? That's got to be going on um, five years. I'm really not sure, but I'm, I'm guessing five well, years. And the fact of the matter is, and I know you would agree with me on this, and for you guys out there that are gospel music fans, if we go out and do a concert and don't tell people, or not, not necessarily do an altar call, right. but just tell them, say, hey, we're singing these songs about the man who has changed our lives, right. and he can change your life. Yeah. And I mean, it's fun, but if we don't tell you that Jesus can change your life at the end of the night, or at some point during the program, right. then what's... To me, it's it's just yeah. Uh, what's the point, kind of? To me, it but, really is. So I, I love that you do that. I appreciate. It. Well, here's the thing, and then this will ruffle some feathers here, but so you it's know, okay. send the letters to Matt. God did not sanction gospel music. Right. The methods He chose was the the, the word, the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word. You know, those those are the methods He, he chose to bless. Those are the things He really blesses when you present the gospel. Is a gospel in our songs? Absolutely, absolutely it is. But the speaking of the gospel is a special thing that mm -hmm. God ordained and chose right. to use. So what's wrong with taking a few minutes? Now, Andrew, it took me some time to, to, to get it in, in, a, in a good, and I knew that going in. I knew that when I started this, I was gonna be terrible at it, and I knew it was gonna take too long, but it just takes time to learn how to do something. Right, yeah. Well, I love it that you guys do it, and I hope that you do it for the rest of your career, however That's long that may be. That's the plan. Uh, Elaine Harcourt would like to know. I know Elaine. Who, Hi, are, Elaine. who are your musical heroes? Oh, so. The short, the short list. Oh, yeah. Um, well, certainly my dad. I grew up listening to my dad and my Uncle Charles in the Rebels Quartet. Right. That, that foundational, that's it. And then um, there was Ronnie Tutt, the drummer for Elvis. A lot of intensity that we have is, my mm -hmm. musical intensity came from Ronnie Tut's um, playing. So I, somehow I've translated the drums into singing. Nice. Um, but then uh, for many years, of our family, people don't know our family story. Um, Dad was out of gospel music, out of the church for quite a while in our form, formative teen years. So we were influenced by Restless Heart, Eagles, Gatlin Brothers, Oak Ridge Boys, Journey, a lot of secular, secular groups. Wow. But then, uh, anyway, God did a great work back in gospel music, and we took those influences and, and put them in there. Made it so, into who you are. So today. that's why you hear such a schizophrenic <laughs> Danny Murray. Of, hey, Danny, they're interviewing me. What do you think? Do I look? You look so intelligent. Thank you. I, I, you <laughs> look brilliant. Yeah. Danny, those tell glasses. Me. I know. That's the that the Walmart ones you tell me about. <laughs> Man, they look. They I look got a like prescription. <laughs> hey, buddy. I've been witnessing to this man for a long time. That's right, and I'm getting close. I'm getting so close. Again. Tonight, when you sing, I'm tell, the master. Tell them who you're with. The Voices of Lee. Right, from Danny Lee University, Danny Murray. Murray. 
plug there. Yeah. All right, yeah. Hey, we know we we don't we don't have a band. We're not like these guys. We're not famous, but we sing a cappella. We sing from our heart, and we love these guys. They're so much. incredible. The boots are be- I'm telling you, they're wonderful. Hey, the uh, the idea we got for our arrangement of "Then I Met the Master" came from the voices of the lead because if you notice on the track, it starts with a choral. Uh, arrangement, oohs and ahs, and then and, and we were supposed to have sung it, but they, <laughs> yes. you know. we couldn't afford them. <laughs> if you've watched many episodes at all, then you know that you do not ever know what is going to happen when you are watching an on the couch with Pouch episode. Case in point. So that's just perfect. That's yeah. the way it is. I hope you guys enjoyed that. They are really good, actually. I, I yes. enjoy listening to their all their kidding group. aside, they're phenomenal. Robin Bennett post made a post, and it was a little bit longer. The idea of it was the zipper story. I have no idea. Uh, you weren't there about the zipper story, and if I was there, I don't remember it. Might it might have been before you. So were. I'm all ears. Well, we're on a, one of these cruises we do, and it was uh, Scott Fowler was hosting for this particular segment. We come out singing "Sail On," opening the thing up, and I had a life vest on. And my zipper was down. And, you know, so I sing the whole song, and, you know, nobody offers to help. The audience is just going. <laughs> Come to find out, though, this is the worst part is Fowler knew before I went out on stage. And he just chose not to tell me because he wants, you know, Fowler, he's a okay. dinky little so, fellow. Okay, and, before you say something, you'll, you yeah. know, okay. Tell them, or if, if you have, have you ever pulled a prank on him to get back at him that you would like to share? Well, this was before this happened. Um, and this, I don't know why I did this. Don't write me a letter. Um, devil got in me. We were in Flint, Michigan together. And, you know, Fowler was, Fowler's the one that showed me you can bring a Bible out on stage and read it. Really. Right. So I knew he was going to use his Bible and I saw it sitting up on the stage. We had done sound check and everybody left. <laughs> I don't know why. I just got some scotch tape. Because what I do is hold the mic in one hand and flip that Bible open. He was really good at it. Just boom, right there. So I took the leather binding, opened it up, and then taped it three times across. Nice. And so he couldn't see it. And I knew what was going to happen as an MC. When something happens very quick, you're talking, let people know there's no prayer. They don't, don't even let them know there's an issue. And then you have to decide, navigate the thoughts in your mind. How, what am I going to do? Am I going to address this or am I going to try to nice. move past it? And so it was like slow motion. I was seeing him go through this. And he was saying, let me tell you something, folks. And that was the moment he was trying to figure out what am I going to do? He said, I want to tell you, to, I want to, I want to tell you that, that Michael Booth just taped my Bible shut. So he gave in. He knew. He knew. Who it oh, was. He, yeah, it was, it was pretty. That's a good one. Pretty obvious. That's good. But it was, if it wasn't the word of God, I could have been very proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think I could get away with doing that to him now? I think you should at least try. <laughs> Attempt it. You never know. <laughs> you have job security. Uh, you're all right. right. Yeah. Um, Nathaniel Chapman would like to know your favorite song you wish you could have recorded. This is going to have to be a quick one. Oh, gosh. I'm drawing a blank. i tell you what, what it was, but I did. Now, this might be interesting. I brought He Heals that Legacy 5 recorded. To Scott, I said okay. you need to cut this song, and you it's guys cut it. Song. And I called him a year later. I said, I really want to cut that song. Can I cut it? And so we just cut it on, on a really, yeah, a totally different arrangement. So, in a sense, that was when I when I heard it, I really wanted to record it. But at the time, you guys were looking for material, so I, in my unselfish brotherhood, kingdom minded. Loaned it Thoughtfulness. to us. Thoughtfulness. So <laughs> Basically you, loaned so it. So you guys could yeah. cut it after. Let's <laughs> give some time to like Let us, Yeah, there you so. go. Yeah, that's a beautiful song if you guys haven't heard it. Love he that song. Heals is on our Great Day album. Um, Tom Poe would like to know. And you know what? Really, we haven't had a lot of funny questions. No, it's, which, it's interesting. Which has been, I, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, because I think this is a side of you that maybe some people don't get to see a lot. I think people, it's funny, people are surprised when they travel with us or go out to eat afterwards that, I'm not really bouncing off the walls. Yeah. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't live like that 24/7. It, yeah. I just blow up. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Tom Poe would like to know: Has there ever been a time where you thought about walking away from your musical career? And if there has been, there may not have. But if there has been, what changed your mind? 
And this, I mean, and this is a very personal question. Yeah. I don't know that you've ever no, experienced I, anything like that. I have an answer, but you may, it may be shockingly candid. I, 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 hey, I have thought I about it. walking away many times, many, uh, countless times, for countless reasons, and um, in, in the spirit of being candid with you, many times it was, you understand we're gospel singers, but you understand we're providers for our family. And this is how I provide for my family. And it's not, it's a slow moving ship. It's not something you can just say, I'm not going back. I quit right. this week. You can't do that. And thank God, because here's what happens, people. We all get emotional, right? And we get down, we get physically tired. Mr. Bishop of the bishops, Kenneth Bishop, told us years ago, we were still in a van and trailer. He said, be careful, don't get physically tired, because when you're physically tired, you get emotionally tired, then you get spiritually tired, then you're in danger. Yeah. And when I've gotten physically tired, I got emotionally tired, spiritually tired, I was in danger. Those are the times I wanted to quit. So I'm not thinking right, right? right. And those are the times, um, thank God, I couldn't quit. Right. I, I wish I could give you a more spirit. No, I'm, marching on no. for Christ. I'd love to tell you that I'm that spiritual, but no, I just wasn't able to. And I honestly, yeah. I, I love the candidness of your answer because I really do I really do think this, that if everyone was honest that's out here, they've had at least one moment oh. where they've gotten home from a trip and been like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. I mean, you've had that moment. Yeah. I, and I think everyone would say that they had it if they're honest. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah. the honesty because that's, in reality, you know, that answer I think everyone would give in one yeah. way or another. Now, I, I will say this too. I, we all we, we are making plans somewhere down the road where we, maybe we adjust our schedule. We're not gone as much. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we're able to do that, you know what, folks? I love singing to you. I would love to be around my wife and kids more. Mm -hmm. And if and when the time allows, we'll... We'll, God provides that. We'll do that too. I just don't know when that's going to happen. Well, but I love singing. I don't want to quit singing. Right, and I don't either. Yeah. I love singing too. I just like being home a little more. <laughs> I love being home. <laughs> so there is information in this interview that you Pretty probably <laughs> have never got from another interview yeah. anywhere in gospel music. Yeah, it's, it's out there now, isn't it? I love it. I love it. And I and I don't know. I don't know how long this interview has gone. But when I interviewed Ernie Haas, one of the questions I asked him was. Do you ever think about hanging it up? Yeah. And this isn't a to get at you for being old question or anything <laughs> like that. But you know, I, that was one of the questions that I, you know, do you do you ever think about that? Yeah. And so I want to pose the same since you're being candid. Mm -hmm. Do you think about that? Of, of hanging of yeah. Of, of I, just, I mean, I think you probably have already answered the question. Is like, yeah. There's going to come a time, and it's probably not too far yeah. off where you're going to cut back. You're going right. to slow down. And you know, maybe even retire at some point. Yes, and I, you know, in full candor, I will say we are planning on that. Yeah, we're making plans. When I don't know. It's just, but um, for example, too, I'm trying to make sure that I'm singing songs now in a range that I can sing them when I'm 60, mm -hmm. too. So I'm planning on singing a long time, but I'm also planning on finding a way, Lord willing, to be able to not have to sing so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's um, awesome. So yeah, there's man, Ernie you know, there's, had the same type of an answer. Yeah, Ernie and so, I've talked about this. Yeah, I'm we, sure we're very uh, like-minded in this yeah. aspect. Uh, my life is not. I'm not. My life is not defined. I'm not a gospel singer. I'm. I'm a born-again child of God who married Vicky Booth. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're a bubble, and. Uh, I'm Christian's dad, Jonathan and Austin, and I provide for them by singing gospel music. And whether we eat, whether we drink, whatever we do, we do unto the glory of God. So God is able to use gospel music as a ministry. And also I'm allowed to provide for my family by doing it. But I'll always be a minister. Yeah. Because that's what we all do. You're going to be a singer whether you're singing with Legacy 5 right. or not. Right. You go home, you work for U.S. Postal Service, you're still going to sing mm -hmm. when opportunity presents itself. Right. And I, and I will share this with you guys. It's like, honestly, singing in gospel music was never what really? I planned to do. Really? When I started in 2004, I was still in college, and I planned to sing was sold out 
until I graduated and then go into the corporate world wow. with my business degree. Wow. That's what I planned to do. Yeah, I didn't know that. And so I started with Sold Out. I finished my, in 2004, I finished my degree in December of 2005. I graduated and I was like, I was single. I was like, well, I can keep doing this. And then I got married and I was like, I'm making enough. I can provide for my family. So I'll keep doing it. I don't feel like God's pulling me out of it yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm making enough money, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, well, I'll keep doing it. And now here I am 11 years into it. And this is all I've done for a yeah. career while I was in college and since I've graduated. So, you know, that same type of thing is just like, well, I've never intended to be a gospel singer, but I'm thankful that God has blessed me with the opportunity to be able to do it. Go through the open doors. And however long he has me here, I'm, you know, I'm happy to be here mm -hmm. and I'm happy to be singing and I love doing it and I'll do it until I feel like he says, I need you to go do something else. So it's peaceful, isn't it? It is. I love it. So. This has been awesome. awesome I appreciate man. it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this as much as I have. But now this is time for my most favorite part. Oh, man. <laughs> the time for <laughs> the Fouch Zone. <laughs> what did you, you have? A, you have a certain, the Fouch Zone. The Fouch Zone. You have a certain <laughs> unspecified amount of time to answer the questions. Oh, if you don't get the no. answer in that right you know, amount of time, I, we go I, to I, the next question. I didn't Here we go. The for this. How many satellites have been destroyed by meteors? All of time. Them. How long does it take for a sloth to digest its food? All day. Which animal is the smartest on the planet? Time. How many newborns will be given to the wrong parents per day? Time. And in 1996, Webster's Dictionary had how many misspelled words? Dude, I can't spell cat, man. <laughs> Good thing you're not Webster. I uh, know. On my spell check on my phone. <laughs> he doesn't even have an most answer. Most of the time, it comes up no, I mean, no. nothing no. even close. <laughs> like, hey, stupid, put No the recommendation. Down. No recommendation. That's what it's like. Can you say that? Yeah. Okay. Do you even remember the question? Here we go. No. I'm going to give you a chance to actually wow. answer now. Okay. How many satellites have been destroyed by meteors? You said all of them. <laughs> well, eventually. I want to say that's probably not correct. Maybe that's exaggerating. Would you like to answer? Um, I have no idea. One. Really? Yeah. I would have thought there'd been more than one. I would have too, but according to the internet, you All right, the next, it. it's on the internet. The next one, how long does it take for a sloth to digest its food? Two weeks. You actually <laughs> said all day, but then you looked at my notes <laughs> and now you've answered two weeks. Two weeks is the correct answer, not yeah. all day, but two weeks. Yeah. That's amazing. That is. Uh, which animal is the smartest on the planet? Uh, I didn't even give you time to answer. So would you like to guess? Uh, is it a dolphin? Yeah, porpoise. Really? Yep. Um, I, I, I looked, but the only thing I could make out was popsicle, so I knew popsicle. that. <laughs> Does that look like popsicle well, to you? Well, I couldn't Does see it. It was like at popsicle. an angle. Come on. I don't know. My handwriting isn't the best, yeah. but I mean, come popsicle on. Popsicle to me. Anyways. All right. How many newborns will be given to the wrong parents per day? Two. That's incorrect. Good try, though, at cheating. I wrong I side. I flipped it on you. Yeah. The number is 12. A approximately day? 12 newborns a day will be given to the wrong parents. That's staggering, man. And in 1996, Webster's Dictionary had how many misspelled words? And you said, I can't spell cat. <laughs> so I'm impressed you remembered my answers. I mean, cause Do you have a guess? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> the actual answer is 315. 315 words in the Webster's Dictionary in 1996 were misspelled. That's Can you believe that? No, because I would have never known if I read all, all of them. I would have just went, okay. <laughs> Big question. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. It's been you. good. I finally got to do the I know. couch, couch thing. Whatever. Zone. Zone. Woo. Now I'm busy. I'm scared. Tell them where they can find all the information they want to know about the Booth Brothers. Boothbrothers.com. If you go there, you know more of my schedule than I know currently about Nice. People ask all that, where are you going? I don't know. And they're on Facebook, and I'm sure Twitter, and uh, you guys can catch up with them there. Thank you so much for watching On the Couch with Fouch. Like I said earlier, you never know what's going to happen when you watch an interview of On the Couch with Fouch. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on social media. Is it going to be Appreciate right it. here? Or? Actually, it's probably somewhere like there, somewhere. So, subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.